Unit 7, Periodic Properties, pages 141 to 146, focusing on electron screening, effective nuclear charge, and atomic and ionic sizes. The periodic table. Mendeleev and Mayer developed the first periodic table. They used increasing atomic mass. Elements with similar chemical properties were aligned in columns or groups or families, and some elements were unknown at the time, and spaces were left in the table predicting their discovery. Henry Moseley discovered a way to measure the number of protons in an atom. He made the connection between element and number of protons, and then Moseley modified the table by arranging them in increasing, increasing atomic number instead of atomic mass. Now let's talk about electron shells, comparing hydrogen's 1s shell, which is denoted in black here, and neon's 1s shell, which is denoted in black, the 2s in gray, and the 2p orbits. First, the shell in neon is closer to the nucleus than in hydrogen because neon has a larger positive charge in its nucleus or a higher effective nuclear charge, plus 10 versus plus 1. So it's going to pull the 1s orbital closer to the nucleus because of the positive and the negative attractions between the nucleus and the negative electrons. Neon is bigger than helium for two reasons. One, because neon actually has an energy level 2, which is going to make it be larger than just an energy level 1, and because of the screening from the, of the 2s and the 2p electrons from the 1s electrons, these electrons are allowed to spread out more because they are screened from the nucleus by the 1s sublevel. Electron shells for helium and argon. So here's a graph, and up here we have argon, showing you where the 1s orbital is, has a very high electron density, zero distance from the nucleus, and then we have our 2s and 2p, which are also still pretty close to the nucleus, and then we have our 3s and 3p over here. Notice helium's 1s is about there, and so it's not quite as close to the nucleus as the 1s orbit of argon, and that's because helium has two protons in the nucleus pulling at the electrons versus 18 protons of argon, and so there's going to be a higher effective nuclear charge of argon pulling on the 1s electrons. And so these 1s electrons are much closer to the nucleus than the ones that are in helium. So all the shells interpenetrate each other. You can identify certain regions of space where electrons are mostly from one particular shell, and note how close the 1s orbital is to the nucleus in argon compared to helium. This is a result of the much larger nucleus in argon, which pulls the inner shell of the 1s orbital closer. Electron screening. Energy of an electron is what electron screening focuses on. The energy of each electron depends on, one, the electron and nucleus attraction, and the electron-electron repulsions. Both of these quantities depend on what orbital the electron is in. So the effective nuclear charge, or ZEF, is the net average electron to nucleus attraction. ZEF characterizes the average nuclear charge in electron fields, including the average effects of all electron-electron repulsions. Electron screening does not change too much within the same subshell. Electron screening is more important for an orbital whose shape is further away from the nucleus, so screening is more important for F, then D, then P, then S. As the orbital gets larger, screening becomes more important. Screening increases the principal quant with principal quantum number N. So the greater the value of the N value, or the principal quantum number, then the more screening there is. Remember, as you go down the periodic table, there's one shell, two shells, three shells, four shells, etc. And so the more energy levels that you have, the more screening there is, because energy level 4 is being screened by energy levels 3, 2, and 1, and energy level 7 is being screened by energy levels 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then this is also a trend where the radius is increasing. The more energy levels you have, the larger the radius becomes. If you are trying to compare two things, such as 4s and 4d, and ask which one gets more screening, well they both are on energy level 4, however now the D sublevel is going to get more screening than the S sublevel because on average it's a little bit further away from the nucleus than the S sublevel is.
Notice that as atomic number goes up, effective nuclear charge goes up. So your effective nuclear charge increases going to the right, and even though the atomic number is increasing going down the group, we kind of ignore it and consider it negligible as far as effective nuclear charge in a group because the more shielding you get, then that kind of negates effective nuclear charge. General trends for atomic sizes. Re recall from chapter 6 that orbital size increases with principal quantum number n. Principal quantum number n increases down the column, so the orbital size increases going down the column. So again, going down the group, your radius gets larger as your n value gets larger. As a result, the atomic radius increases going down the column, going down the column. In a period, horizontally, in the row, because the effective nuclear charge experienced by the valence electrons increases going to the right as the nucleus grows, then the effective nuclear charge increases the orbitals. It gets pulled closer to the nucleus and the atomic size decreases. So in the period or the row, the atomic size decreases as you go from left to right. And so if I, as your effective nuclear charge increases, the size of your atom gets smaller. And so they're showing our radius increases going this way and going this way in a group. And here's a little chart showing you atomic radius in angstroms, and you can see where it's increasing as you go down the period and how it's getting smaller as you go from left to right across. And so it's increasing as you go this way across a row. Atomic ionic sizes. So here's a neutral beryllium atom. And notice that when you get a positive charge, we've lost some of the electrons, which means the effective nuclear charge, four protons, instead of pulling on four electrons, now it's only pulling on two. So you can see where the size gets smaller when you get a positive charge. When the charge becomes negative, we have gained more electrons. And adding more electrons means there are more electron-electron repulsions, which causes the ion to be larger whenever it has a negative charge. As the number of electrons goes up in an atom, electron-electron repulsions increases and the atomic uh, atom size increases. Said another way, the effective nuclear charge is decreased as the number of electrons goes up, causing atomic size to increase. Cations are smaller than the neutral atom. Anions are larger than the neutral atom. Here's your note card for this unit. The higher the n value, the more electron screening that's going to occur. So that means that there are more electrons that are becoming shielded from the nucleus or the effective nuclear charge. The more protons there are, the stronger the effective nuclear charge. The more electrons there are, the more electron-electron repulsions that exist. So here's your periodic table. And as you go down the family or down the group on the periodic table, say towards francium in group one, your N value increases, which means your screening increases, which means your atomic radius is also increasing. As you go from left to right across the period or the row, protons are increasing, which means that the effective nuclear charge is increasing and the radius is going to decrease as I go across the period towards helium. For electron screening, it's also important to know that F is greater than D, which is greater than P, which is greater than S in case you come down to a same energy level comparison. The ionic radius, if you have a neutral atom, then if it becomes a positive charge, the radius will get smaller because there's a higher zeth. And then if it becomes a negatively charged ion, then there's more electron-electron repulsions, which means that the outer electrons are feeling a lower effective nuclear charge, and so the atom becomes larger.